So why do we base train as runners and why is it important? There are so many reasons that it's a massively beneficial time for us during training and today I've narrowed it down to five that I want to talk about. So welcome back to another video and as I approach the end of my base training period, getting ready next week to start my next 10k training block, I wanted to sit down and talk about the benefits and why we base train as runners. Why is it such a beneficial time in training? As I said in the intro, I've narrowed it down to five specific points that I want to dive in and talk about and before I give you those five points I want to give you my example of my current base training so you can get some stats and figures and see how I've been doing it over the last four weeks. So post Newport Marathon I've undertaken a four week base training period which is coming to an end this week. I took a full week off after the marathon and just for context with the stats I'm about to give you my training my peak training during marathon uh, season was eight hours and ten minutes. I had a couple of weeks in the eight hour uh, region but mainly a lot of them were late six hours early seven hours so that was the main bulk of where my training was peaking just over eight hours so that will give you some context as to what I'm about to say now so that first week was completely off and then I did a three and a half hour training week the first week back all with the heart rates in the 130s I think the average for that week was like 137 for all of the runs combined then into week two I injected my first bit of intensity in the long run so literally three weeks post marathon we're including the week off uh, and that was uh, 149, 135, 134, 146, 154. Those are the average heart rates for the week. Again, just five runs that week and that 154 at the end being the long run. That was a progressive long run. So although the average is 154, we started lower and finished higher. Then on the 8th of May, we started to inject the first workout um, back. And we're going to talk about workouts in the base training phase shortly because I do believe they should be in there personally, but obviously they're different type of workouts to what we might be doing in shorter, faster intervals. We don't want to sort of go over that threshold. We're trying to keep things very aerobic and very controlled. And so my heart rates on that week were 136 for the workout, 166, and then 130, 151, 136, and 157. So keeping things nice and controlled. That 166, we'll talk about that shortly. That was a bit of an interval workout. And then we're on to this final week, which I haven't completed yet, but so far I've done an easy and a moderate run, meaning 137 and 148. Nothing will change this week. There'll be one workout, uh, and there will be a race at the weekend, but it will be a little bit more of a relaxed race, wrapping up my base training period. Now there are some golden rules that we're going to talk about with base training but the way I like to see it is my first couple of weeks I don't want to inject any sort of anything really into it no workouts nothing the long run that I did at the end is fine because I didn't really kind of uh, ramp up the gears too much I did put the hammer down towards the end but it wasn't a real focused effort and it was downhill so I did keep everything nice and controlled in the first two weeks I like to inject a bit of something a bit more serious into week three and then depending on how long my base training phase is I've done a six week one before this is a shorter one very much on the short end of the spectrum uh, with four weeks I do like to start to put something in now with these two workouts that I'm doing uh, in the previous week and this week they are probably not the most um, conventional base training uh, workouts that I would normally do I'd normally try and stick to sort of tempo work I have been doing shorter sharper intervals or I did last week I should say it's 10 by one minute on one minute off so I did push uh, a little bit harder than I normally would and I will again this week but that's just because I guess in my mind I'm trying to get myself ready for the 10 K training that's about to commence but again load of work that I did last week was 10 minutes so literally just 10 minutes worth of intensity out of the five and a half hours I did just 10 minutes were really sort of top end everything else was a heck of a lot more controlled similarly this week it'll probably be 15 minutes uh, out of the similar amount of training time which again will be around five and a half to six hours so you can see literally out of all that time such a minute amount of time is spent with any form of effort the rest is all very controlled very aerobic and that's kind of how I like to do my base training so now you've heard my example that I've just undertaken let's talk about the reasons why we do it effectively the first one I want to talk about is it just gets your body back into old habits gets your body ready for what is about to come I like to think of it as kind of giving your body like a car giving it a service before you take it out on the road effectively if I was to jump straight back into a training block and get right back up there uh, with that time that I was doing in marathon training 
from almost a standstill a week off and then ramping straight back up into it it's just a recipe for disaster getting the body into as i said those old habits oiling the system getting it ready throwing in some strides as well for that speed work which is something i've been doing and i forgot to mention actually but something i do once a week uh, from week three onwards so i did it last week and i'll do it this week as well is just great to get the body firing on all cylinders getting a tiniest bit of speed in there getting that leg turnover but keeping everything really nice nice and controlled. It's just such a great way to lay the foundations for what we are about to do. The second reason why I feel it's really important is it allows us to develop a good level of fitness, uh, keeping everything nice and aerobic before we jump in. So like I've just talked about, about oiling the engine and getting our body back into old habits, we'll also bring our fitness levels back up. So when we come straight off the back of a marathon and try and inject a bit of speed, we're going to feel really rusty, but allowing our bodies to get used to things again really helps us attack that uh, next block, that next training cycle uh, with a little bit more vigor and not quite feel as rusty as we did. Now this might be a little bit controversial and I'm happy to put it out there because if you follow me on Strava you'll see it. It'll be a hypocrite to say otherwise. The whole mantra of run easy to run fast or to run fast you need to run slow the whole 80 20 rule this base training phase is exactly where for me this mentality kicks in i don't always stick by that mantra though and although in my recent training blocks that i've done especially the marathon one yeah i've kept a lot of my runs uh, easy and aerobic i know that when i come to 10k training faster that ratio does skew with the marathon it's a little bit different i do keep a lot of things a bit more controlled but i'm also very aware that even during that training block um that my ratio certainly is no longer 80-20. Uh, I'd probably say in marathon training, it's not quite as uh, more level, let's say, as what it's gonna be in 10K training, but it certainly is an 80-20. And so there's definitely a time and a place for running easy to run fast. That whole concept is great. I 100% agree with it. And this is where base training, this is, this is the motto of base training. So I know that this is where I need to keep my head switched on uh, for that. This is not the time for me to go and chase faster times this is the time for me to lay those foundations and i can get into the specificity of 10k training soon and the third really important thing and the reason why that we do base training well for me in particular obviously a classic thing that a lot of people say is it is low injury risk because obviously we're running a little bit easier we're not running as fast as much so everything is a lot more easy conversational and controlled my twist on that though is not necessarily it reduces injury risk because it does we know that but it also allows us to find any niggles and injuries that we did or were carrying during the previous block and give us a chance to iron it out this is why it's so important for me I did start to develop a little bit of sort of sciatic pain in my right hand side I picked up a bit of a glute niggle in my last two weeks of marathon training I did have to take an unexpected rest day and kind of adjust training slightly in the last few weeks marathon went really well really happy with it but that was something that i noticed was still there when i started base training again it's just something that i've had to manage and work on to get better ready for my 10k training block so yep you'll hear everyone say oh it's great for injury risk you're running much lower intensity it's great for your body yep i agree with it but twist it my take on it as i said is definitely using this time to iron out anything you've picked up in previous blocks, see a physio, see a sports masseuse, do what you need to do to use this time to get ready for your next block. And point number four, another really important reason, this is new to me this block, so this is interesting for me to share, but again, establish old strength and conditioning patterns. Establish old uh, habits that you had during your last training block that were helping alongside running, whether it's cross training, whatever it is, use this time to start gently easing back into it. So again, if we talk about running, what we're talking about is we don't wanna ever add intensity and volume at the same time that is a recipe for disaster we either add volume or we add intensity and then when we're used to it we then can creep the other one up however way you do it we know that we don't do it both at the same time well cross training and strength and conditioning is no different because we're putting a load on our body remember our body doesn't understand pace and times and stuff it only understands the effort we're putting in so if we suddenly dive into a new training block and then straight away get back in to those strength and conditioning habits those cross training habits that load is suddenly going to be monstrous so what i personally be doing uh, personally been doing over these last two weeks i didn't do any strength and conditioning in the first two weeks 
But last week and this week, I've gently got back in to my strength and conditioning routine where I do core work twice a week and I do upper body glutes and hips twice a week with weights. Those weights have come down, so I'm just using lighter weights at the moment. More reps, lighter weights, just to get my body used to those patterns again, those workouts, getting the core firing. But it's not as intense as it was, but it's getting the body ready to know that I am going to be undertaking two of these a week, again, alongside my training. Don't shock the body when it comes comes to uh, straight away doing it with a training plan, get ready now. And the fifth reason why I feel this is a really important time, and this really applies to me and probably a lot of you guys, but just it's a time to relax, it's a time to ditch the routine that we've normally been in and just have some fun. Remind ourselves why we run. We love running, we do this because we enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy yourselves. For me, when I'm in a training block, I can be quite regimented and I can really have to sort of work stuff around to fit runs in. I'm very grateful for my wife's support. We have three kids, so often most of my runs are done before school run time or they're done in the evening during times when my kids are at social activities so that's how my running is planned during the week uh, I do always get a lot of questions as to why don't you run at this time why do you because I have to fit it around family and this time is a case of if you end up missing a run or you get up a little bit late do you know what it doesn't matter just miss the run for that day I've already missed two runs during this base training period and it's absolutely okay I don't stress about it I don't worry it's a time for as a family just to reset and go again and from a personal level get out there for me enjoy the trails that are just out my doorstep and just have some fun whether you want to ditch the watch whether you want to play some kind of mental games with your friends or whatever it is chat with them as you're running have some social runs just reset enjoy yourself before things get serious for the next training block so there we go those are my five reasons as to why i feel base training is so important for runners why it's such an important period of time for us during our running journey and why it's a great time to mentally reset ready to go again so hopefully the example i gave at the start gives you some context as to why i talked about what i did today and if you've got any questions don't forget to drop them in the comments below i'd love to hear from you it would be great to chat down there that's it for today's video guys if you enjoyed it please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content i'll see you in the next one until then